Good morning. It's Brian Ponder, Brian, a credit lawyer. I just realized it's been many months since I've jumped on here to do a video. So I wanted to jump back on to add some value um, and information to you. Well, um, a couple things. One, I have group training now, and that's what I've been involved in on a weekly basis, a couple times a week, like Tuesdays and Thursdays, typically. I'll jump on and do training with people. So if you're interested in having this training, it's live with me. Look in the description and you'll see a link to my training. Also, of course, you if you haven't already, you want to grab a copy of my book, Four Steps to Better Credit. It really gets you through the process that I talk about all the time regarding improving your credit. What I want to talk about today is the consumer reporting agencies are doing something that they've done in the past, but I I'm seeing a lot more of it lately, um, particularly consumer reporting agencies, and that's whether it be Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, and there are many others, they're taking your dispute and then in response sending you information regarding identity theft. Please, please, please do not fall victim to this stall tactic, and that's all that it is, because when you're writing to dispute an inaccurate or incomplete uh, data point on your um, consumer report, that is not identity theft. And unless you are saying identity theft, they should not be stalling, sending you additional paperwork to complete. That is a violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act in that they have all they need to conduct their reinvestigation and to modify, delete um, the information or ask for more information uh, according to the law. So do not fall for that. Please, please, when you get that paperwork, do not complete it out unless you're a victim of identity theft. Um, if you are writing them to identify inaccurate information that you want deleted, you should stand by that letter. So if you receive something like that, really, you have no obligation to send it back. At best, you could send them back a letter saying what I sent you is a dispute not an identity theft affidavit, and you should act on that dispute within the time un under the law. So um, keep that in mind. Um, you know, it's really upsetting to see how they misconstrue people's disputes. And I think it's a stall tactic because the, some of the responses I'm seeing from CRAs speaking about sending identity theft information the dispute itself says nothing at all about identity theft information, um, identity theft, you know, uh, crimes or anything like that. It's typically straightforward letters that identify inaccurate information, incomplete information, asking for a deletion or modification of that information. So a deletion, of course, is where they delete the entire trade line. A modification is where they change something. Sometimes a change can be as simple as putting a zero as the balance or deleting or updating it to say paid, uh, never late. Uh, a deletion could be uh, deleting a late payment, but that's really a modification. Modification of deleting deleting a late payment and putting paid as agreed. That's a modification. Um, it may seem like a deletion, but it's a partial deletion of the late payment, a modification of the information uh, to put in what it should be. So it's sort of a hybrid. But again, keep in mind, when you get these identity theft follow-ups in response to your dispute, if you're, if you're not a victim or if you're not reporting identity theft, do not use that form. If you use that, it's going to buy more time and it's also going to convert the type of dispute you have to one for identity theft, which is, which is a totally different thing. Do not fall on that bandwagon. There are a lot of people out there using identity theft as a dispute. And that's not the case. Identity theft is where someone steals your identity, opens an account, and you don't know that. If you have um, information that you're not calling identity theft, but you're calling out the inaccurate or incomplete information, stick to it. Do not let the consumer reporting agency sway you as if, hey, you should do it this way. D don't, don't do that. Okay. Uh, any questions? You know, feel free to jump in the comment section. I can't promise to get to those questions, but there are a lot of people in the community that, you know, can chime in. We can 
certainly support each other there. Join my Facebook group. And most importantly, those of you that really want to take your education to the next level, consider joining my credit mastery training. We meet live twice a week on Zoom in the evening and then everything is recorded. And what I do is archive all the recordings into a private group that you'll have access to so you can go back and review. And we also modify and update many letters and templates. We create more templates. So it's just an awesome group um, um, to invest your skills and knowledge in to help with your credit or some of the people in the group are credit professionals. They run credit repair organizations or some of the people are just looking to improve their own credit. What you'll find if you improve, once you start improving your, working to improve your own credit, this becomes an ongoing process. You're never really done necessarily. And that's because as you grow your credit, you're going to find that there's going to be errors, things to improve, um, and things of that nature. So you're always continuing to learn. And of course, it's a process. A lot of the things don't happen quickly. And so you're always going to need some support throughout your credit building process. At some point you may stabilize and if you do nothing, um, you, you know, you still have to monitor to make sure everything is uh, proper on your credit report to maximize your score, to keep your score up. So look, join us, it, you know, it's a weekly um, subscription that, you know, so you cancel any time, but uh, we'll love to have you. So again, if you have any questions, uh, drop it down below. If you need a consultation, I'll put my link my website link in the description. You can jump on there, consult with me at any time. Uh, it's as simple as going to my calendar, finding a time slot that works for you, and I'll talk to you then, okay? Y'all have a great day, and I'll be sure to come back on here soon. So if y'all if y'all see me off of here for a long period of time, get so busy, you know, drop a comment in another video and say, hey, you know, we want to hear about this. Um, also, also you can, you know, shoot me an email, but you can yeah, make a comment and say, Hey, we hadn't seen you in a while. You know, can you talk about this subject? So I will, I definitely want to try to get on here at least once a week or more. So, um, keep an eye out, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Um, if you subscribe that way, anytime I put out a new video, some new content, you'll be notified. And when I do put out new content, trust me, you do want to be notified because I'm, I'm, Every day I'm in the trenches with respect to credit and debt and real estate. So you definitely want to be notified when I come on with some information for you. So today, keep in mind, do not respond to ID theft responses to your dispute. Okay, that's a totally different dispute process. We'll talk about it another day. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.